everybody and welcome back to David Christopher's. We're so excited to see you again for another episode. I'm Jen. I'm David. And today, David, tell us what we're going to be doing. Today I'm getting a little bit of a jump start on Memorial Day through the 4th of July. So get ready for red, white, and blue. Yeah, let's get started. So this morning when I got dressed, I did not know we were doing Memorial Day for the July, so I don't feel very festive. Just kind of a last minute decision. And that's I'm also, yeah, that's true. I'm also wearing my glasses in case anyone noticed. Um, Jen's, I, Jen's not real sensitive about that at all. So. No, I have been wearing glasses since the third grade. I got contacts in fifth grade, so I wear a combination of glasses and contacts for the last, like, 30 years longer um, and I am going for my consultation in a few days to check to see if I'm a candidate for some type of Lasix or corrective surgery because I'm just so tired of dealing with my glasses and I'd like to hear from any of you in the comments if you've had this surgery let me know how it went for you if you liked it please no horror stories <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's almost too late to turn back at this point, so <laughs> if we had a bad experience, just leave it alone. Yeah, that's right. It'll be too late by the time you see this video anyway, so hopefully it goes well. I'm excited. So I hope if you've had it done, it went well for you. Maybe me replying to everyone this weekend because yes. Jim may not be... Yeah. What am I supposed to write back? Yes. So anyway. Uh, you're not here for that. You're here because you want to see something that David's going to make, probably, right? So what's the first thing that you're going to show them? So I think the first thing that I'm going to show them is we're going to turn one of these wall baskets into a hanging flag. Ooh. Doodle. Okay, so I've got a crazy idea for this wall basket. Instead of making, you know, stuff in it, which is what most people would probably do because it's meant to have flowers inside of it or something, I'm planning to do a flag on the outside. But because my basket is longer this direction than it is this direction, I'm planning to do my flag where it's hanging vertically. So I, I'm hoping to do a blue square here and then stripes uh, vertically as opposed to horizontally, like it's hanging. So to give myself something to glue to, I'm gonna put styrofoam inside of my basket. So I'm gonna go down most of the way. Sorry, I know it's loud. And that should be pretty good. Get a little glue on the corners. I'm going to cram that into my basket pretty deep and then I'm actually going to push this in a little bit tighter just to help hold that in place and I don't need all the space at the top because we're not going to put all the flowers in it. We're going to put the flowers on the outside. I'm going to need a few wires. So I'm basically taking some wire that I cut off of something else and I just bend them into a U-shape. That way I can easily fix things onto my basket uh, as needed. So normally I would moss my styrofoam before I put it in my basket, but because we're putting things on the outside of the basket, I don't have to worry about that this time. So I'm going to cut my blue hydrangeas And then I'm going to start building my square of blue background. Try and keep these kind of even. Okay, so four hydrangeas makes this a pretty good square. I've got these little miniature roses that are individual stems and they come as a little bundle. I'm going to separate these apart. I'm just cutting these to a more appropriate size because they're a little too long to use as they are. 
I've come to assist, so I'm going to keep cutting these up while David is working on that. Now, is it white stripes or red stripes on top? I think I'm supposed to know this from Boy Scout. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google it. <laughs> Time to break out the Google. I think it's red. I'm, my guess is red. I think it is red, but I just want to spell it. I feel like it's red. I don't want to do it wrong. Yeah, there's not a white stripe yeah, on top. Yeah, it's red on it's, top it's and red. the bottom. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's white. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bit in from the top and start with my roses. Shift over and start again. Oh, so you're not going to go ahead and put the red in? No, I'm going to go ahead and do most of my white. Just so I get some stripes going here. So that will give me a... Because my red flower... I'm going to use witch hazel for my red flower and it's a little bit more wild. Just showing you that anybody can do this. <laughs> So you're putting in witch hazel for the red? Yes. This right here? Yes. Now is red directly below? Maybe I don't have to be. No, white below, so that's perfect. Oh, does this go with this? No. That's a, that's a new rose. Okay, I'm confused. You going to put red right in there? Yeah. It's not going to be... Okay. We'll leave it to the expert here. See what happens. I have my glasses on. Here, I'll, I'll cut some. Let's cut a little long. Here? No. <laughs> My finger. Oh, you're cutting them really long. You well, I made a few really long. long. Okay. That way I can reach a little well in the basket here. I guess you can always cut more off. You can't add it back easily. It's, it's a lot harder to add. So this is something that you can use now, and then you can also just leave it up through 4th of July. Yeah, so I like to, right after Mother's Day, flip into red, white, and blue mode. Lovely, darling, just lovely. Is that the last row? Yeah, I think that's gonna be the last row. Why? Are you putting some in for stars? Yes. And we'll be adding a few for the stars. Probably not going to get 50. You know, maybe we'll go with the original 13 or something. You're going to get 13? It's going to cover up all the blue. Well, just something uh, semi, you know, representative of state. Okay. So if you're watching this video, these states represent whatever state you live in. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to fit 50, but you can pretend. I guess I'll just go ahead and claim this one for Alabama since we are from Alabama. But all the others are up for grabs. You can claim your state right here. 
I'm gonna bend this really short because we're gonna use this whole piece as part of the stripes. And here's where those little U-shaped pins I made start to come in. Oh yeah, pin them on. Since they're a little wild and wispy, I kind of force them into the shape that we want to take. How many of these do you think you're going to use? I have no idea. <laughs> well, I'm cutting the tags off of them. Okay. I think you will need several for sure. I'm going to need a few. And no. we did use one bush of hydrangea and two bundles of, we used two bundles of roses, I think so. Or did you get some out of a third bundle? Uh, I got some, I think we used three bundles of roses. But keep in mind, David is doing this on our larger door basket because it's easier to see on camera and to work with but we do have this in the smaller version so if you're online shopping you can make a smaller version of the flag with less flowers and it would be less expensive and this one would fit on most standard doors and be fine this is just if you want something a little bit larger some people's doors are I guess bigger than others or I know there's I a standard size on a very small yeah. scale I know, you don't. That's not my, uh, that's not what I'm known, well known for. I have to tell y'all, it has been hard with my glasses to try to do my makeup because I cannot see when I take my glasses off. So I'm like right up in the mirror trying to put makeup on my face. And so I don't even know what it looks like. It's fun at night when she takes her glasses off and I'm like, can you see? Did I just? <laughs> I basically have just kind of see blobs of things without my glasses or contacts in and I uh, have negative 6.50 in my left eye and negative 5.75 in my right eye. So some of you probably have me beat and some of you are probably like, whoa, you are close to blind. They let you drive? <laughs> <laughs> Not without glasses or contacts. I would not be safe to do anything. I mean, I literally have to be like this tag. If I take my glasses off, I can see it about right there. So that's how close something has to be to my face to be able to see it without my glasses. It is crazy, but I'm thankful for glasses and contacts to accommodate me and help me. Is that enough? Yeah. Oh, cause you've got, you've got these two left. Yeah. Okay, move these off. And I'm cutting a few pieces up so I can fill in toward the top up here. True test of things. I can see. What does Jen think it is without her glasses? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a flag without my glasses. I can see colors fine. It's just the details of stuff are blurred. I can tell you're a person without my glasses, but that's I'm about a, it. I'm a person. From, from this distance, good. I can tell you're a man. Oh. <laughs> See your weird hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> glasses off. Yeah, to see it this way, it works as well. Yeah. As a flag. You can put a pole in it. Okay. Use it lots of ways. But we're hanging it on the door. Yep. 
And you're going to cover the top with some eucalyptus. Yep. So now we're going to use our little whitewash eucalyptus here. Yeah. Gumdrop style. That's what I was looking to see. 18, 19 inch gumdrop eucalyptus plant. I'm going to cut it fairly short and fairly tailored so that we don't lose a lot of our flag here. By tailored, you mean? I mean, I want it just kind of like a crop top. Across. You know, like <laughs> if you went into the military, yeah, you you just you know, buzz it off at the right height. Not a mullet. No. Mullets are back. Have you all noticed that? More people are wearing mullets, it seems like. And every time I see someone, I'm kind of like, wow, full circle. That's when you know you're starting to get older. When you when things were that way when you were younger, and then when you get older, they come back around and you're like, oh yeah, my third grade boyfriend had a mullet. This is like the, the part of the video where Jen throws up the picture of my mullet, but I never had one. <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> can't can't go back and do that. You wish you did, don't you? Oh yeah, it would be great content right now. You wish you see had enough hair for a mullet. That's why people do the trendy things they do. Like, mm -hmm. I'll need this later for YouTube. That's right. I think in the 80s we had YouTube. If you're rocking a mullet out there, we salute you. Bravery. Uh -huh. That's bravery. That's bravery. <laughs> But seriously, if you are serving in our U.S. military, we do salute you and we are so thankful and grateful for your service or if you're the family member of someone, we know that, that you all have to make a huge sacrifice and our son, the oldest, is in JROTC at his school and he really enjoys it. He's learning a lot of leadership things, doing community service and is considering military. Who knows? But if he does, I know that will be hard on my mama heart, but I will be proud of him for stepping up to serve as serve his country and, you know, to take care of those around him. So thank you for your service. So I did notice, uh, because I, I can't tell from this angle, <laughs> looking diagonally that this part was shorter. So when I was able to step back from it, I did notice that I needed to add some just to make this kind of even out uh, right here so that I didn't have this shorter side. And sometimes you need to sit back and look at it. I try to make them on the video where you can see what I'm doing, but it doesn't always work perfectly. Idea number one is complete, and we're going to move on to idea number two. Yep. For idea number two, we're gonna do also something that can hang on your front door or wherever you would want something to hang. Uh, this is a new hanging fern piece that we got in, and I've been just kind of trying to decide what I wanted to do with it, so I thought this would be a really good time to try something that I have never tried before because I like doing that. Um, I just like crazy stuff that challenges me, so. I'm going to try to make a like a teardrop hanging shape out of red, white, and blue. So we're going to start with our Helio Blue Hydrangea Bush uh, again because it is the one of the best colors of blue that I have found for red, white, and blue. And I'm just going to wire this in to the top. That's my firm brush here. Got to get behind all the leaves and find the actual wire. bend all of these in the shape that you really want them in. So with this, I actually end up with one small spot left, and I'm going to use the other hydrangea from our previous flag basket and wire it into that space. Now we're going to use some of everybody's favorite, the witch hazel stems, to start putting some red into our drop here. 
and we're of course going to use wire to fasten those to our branches. You're making a lot of progress on this. I'm making a little bit of progress. Are you planning to cut these? Yeah, so these got a little long with my witch hazel stem, so we're just gonna snap the long ones up here just to hide that. And David keeps a lot of these pieces for other little And what's known projects. as a hoarder. Yeah, a hoarder of the scraps. Yeah. You can't use them. That looks really nice. So now you're going to add in the white? So now we're going to start with some white lilies. And these kind of look like stars to me, almost. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. we're going to use a little bit of these up here and kind of throughout. Great. So if you have those incredibly large double doors, this would work really well for you. I know it's getting kind of tall, but I think it'll work out when we get finished with it. Now I'm planning to put a bow in my hydrangea area. So I'm going to use this blue, uh, it's kind of like a linen with a white pattern on the top of it. So that's keeping in kind of our stars and stripes. So I like the ribbon to kind of loop like it's making, it's deciding to kind of become a bow. So I'll take it and kind of tie it to a branch at some point. And that gives it a little more movement than if it's just free to hang. Okay, so I have decided that I need a little more red. I'm going to add some of these red roses that we are starting to run out of, which is why I intended not to use them originally, but I'm going to use them because I think it needs to be. This piece is finished, and you could always, just to make it clear, you can make yourself a little sign like I made here, and this can be made larger than this, but this is just kind of all I had today. We were talking about how if we had a little Happy Fourth of July sign, it would be cute, but you can put a little sign or something in your piece to yeah. give it that extra. A lot of people have those little small yeah. wooden plaques or a metal placard mm -hmm. or something that you can hang kind of in here or up in the bow and uh, really celebrate. Fireworks. I'd put fireworks in it. Set it off. Put it in reverse, Terry. Back up, back up. You have created two beautiful Memorial Day, 4th of July related DIYs. And now we have one more, the third one. And this is gonna be the easiest one yet, right? Yeah, so it's, you know, slightly complicated, a little more complicated, super easy. Just find one of these <laughs> wreaths that we're gonna have on sale. And when it comes, it's probably gonna be in a box. So you do have to kind of pull some of this apart. It's not very hard. You really just wanna separate each individual uh, flower, just kind of shaping it, spreading it out to the sides. 
uh, because it's got a lot of different pieces in it. Mm -hmm. So you just want to make sure that that's, you try to cover the wreath as much as possible, but you also spread some things out to the sides as well. What happens is sometimes people order pre-made wreaths like this, and when they get them in, they look kind of flat and squashed, and they say, this does not look like what was on your website. And no, it doesn't, but it can. You do have to do a little bit of straightening and shaping. That's why we call it still a DIY, because there is a little bit to be said for some people who are not as great at shaping, but we think anybody can pretty much do it. Yeah. Just a little bit of practice and patience mainly. Just like he said, touching every strand. Kind of, you know, you can just kind of grab a few things and kind of lift, and that will kind of pull everything up. You don't want anything just really flat on the wreath. But grab that David style, because my style is I would probably rip yeah. something off. I'm a little aggressive. Jen's like, I show uh, that claw machine how this works. <laughs> just <yeah>. grab, grab. <laughs> so these wreaths, the, the thing that I think is so cool about a lot of our wreaths are that they are all handmade, and we have these imported, but most of the time David will go on site in the past, and I know now it's through pictures. Prior to Corona. Prior to COVID-19, um, he would go on site and put one together at the factory, and then the factory just duplicates it a billion times, basically. So you are getting uh, David Christopher's design on a lot of our pre-made wreaths, and he can show you what we're going to do with this yeah. one. Besides, just you can't just put this on your door. It's ready yeah. to go. Put it on your door the lazy designer way or the, hey, I don't have any time way, I'm too busy with life way, this is what you're going to want to go with this season. Yeah, this is your DIY. I don't want to spend more than five minutes and I want my door to look good. So. Yes. But then at the same time, if you want something that looks good for your table, maybe you're having an outdoor barbecue, it goes late into the evening because we know that it's going to be the 4th of July and you're going to yes. shoot some fireworks. You know, something with a little bit of a lantern inside of it and then you can always add you know a couple of candles. candles you just gave me a great idea our son is about to turn 16 on may the 3rd he is having his 16th birthday we're going to have him a party later in the week he does not watch our youtube channel so i'm safe in telling you this but we're going to have it he knows about the party but it's going to be um kind of uk was that what i would say based he loves everything yeah. british related he's he loves very obsessed with, yes he's an anglophile an anglophile <laughs> so um we are having the the paper plates and napkins and things are of the british flag union jack union jack and i think i'm gonna get some of these i'm gonna do this for his birthday he won't care about it because he doesn't care about decorations he's a 16 year old boy but i will think that it looks nice to put this outside because yeah. we're gonna do like a barbecue yeah, barbecue maybe we'll light a few fireworks because i always have a little store of fireworks in the garage <laughs> yes he does fireworks at all times with this one i'm not enough of a firecracker for you i guess <laughs> You are, but you know, you need a little danger and excitement in your life. You want to light something and run away. Okay. But that's what you do to me sometimes. Try not to run away. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. Idea number three. And those are your three DIY for the day. Thank you for sticking around. If you're still here, we want to bring you a little bit of a word of encouragement today. And it comes from Galatians 5.1. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So today's video has been concentrating on the freedom that we enjoy here in the United States that we're so grateful for, that we're so thankful for. But we are also thankful for freedom in Christ. When you walk with Christ, you're no longer a slave to sin or to addiction or to a lot of the challenges, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen to you, but you have freedom in Christ. He can set you free. He died on the cross to set you free. So we hope that you're encouraged today. If you're walking through a difficult time and you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he is there to set you free and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we're just hoping that you are able to hold on to that today and walk in that freedom, whether you're live in our country or another country, it doesn't matter. You can still have freedom in Christ. Amen. Bye.